welcome to Signet Telecommunications Bootcamp. And uh, we're going to start off with the Cisco Certified Network Associate. Uh, my name is Osama Kuru, and I believe uh, most of you, you already know me. Um, first thing I will look at is what is the program all about? If you cannot hear me, please let me know. You can put on, you can unmute yourself and just um, say you can hear me or you chat instead of disturbing the video. But um, quickly, let me just tell you about the program. Um, telecommunication, as you all know, is an important uh, tool for business. And um, most companies um, communicate effectively with their customers and be very high product. In fact, imagine a world whereby we don't have um, telecommunications. It will be very, very terrible. The third thing that we need to understand is that telecommunications is a key element in allowing um, companies and corporate bodies to to be able to collaborate with each other either locally or remotely and um, now because of that mobile telecommunications now gives companies the opportunities to introduce more flexible working environment for employees so like we cannot be able to do this if there was nothing like um, telecommunications. Neither can we be able to do things like um, WhatsApp if there was nothing like um, telecoms. So quickly, I would like us to know the scope of this training. The first thing I will look at is um, for the past um, for some weeks, which I just believe that. Um, we hope to be able to meet up. Uh, that's why I want us to have multiple classes. Is that we are going to start off with Cisco Certified Network Associate Training. I've already sent you the syllabus of the training. It is the current syllabus. So all you just need to do is um, download the forms and then go and write your exams if you want to write your exam. But why the training is very, very important is because you will um, you need it. In fact, when we start doing the Training, we find that the whole concept called cloud technology is actually the connection of routers and switches. So, but you will need them some basic information like the IP addressing and everything. So, I've sent you the syllabus, you can go through it and also have a, have a view at what we are looking at. Now, um, the second thing I will be looking at is a microtech. Um, Certified network associate training whereby you are not going to use Cisco equipment, you'll be using micro equipment. So, that also is um, though the topics or the technology are virtually the same, but because we are using different hardware, we have some change in commands and the rest. And we're going to end this session with a uh, CCTV installation. So, but then um, what we'll be doing in the center, most of our lectures are going to be online. Um, but at the center, we will do more of the CCTV installation so that we can be able to um, take pictures and have a practical know-how of how these things go. But like I said in my previous um, slide, that the aim of this um, um, training is for each and every one of us to become a freelance engineer whereby we can sell our products to, to corporate and bodies through fiber and LinkedIn. So uh, quickly, because of time, I would like to go to what the Cisco Certified Network Associate uh, trainings will take. We are going to look at the module one, there are different, divided into different modules. We have the network fundamentals, we have the network access, we have the IP connectivity, we have the IP service, we have the security fundamentals, and lastly, we are going to end with them. Uh, Automation and programmability. Now, why I took time to take give us this is because materials will be shared with us, and I will also appreciate it if we will um, go back and study these materials because they are all the recent technologies that we're talking about out there. You will soon know when we start the segment um, lecture series, and I uh, hopefully share my entire screen so that I will show you guys uh, something. Um, I'm about to open um, 
the transaction, but um, just go to my phone so that you understand the importance of what we are trying to do. Now, I could do that kind of like this and work for keeping the for remote and um, remote and um, to configure remote and um, routers. Uh, KPMG is actually financing, oh, sorry, uh, servicing, supporting a uh, brass fertilizer. So they gave me a job to do a uh, VPN for them. So um, this was, it was a 45 minutes job. But guess what? This was what they paid me. So this is just one of the things that you get from these services when you are uh, an expert in. Um, configuring your routers and your switches. So that's the aim of this um, lecture, so that we can be able to, after we have finished this series, we probably also can be able to do similar services and be paid. Now, having said that, I will uh, remove this share and go to the AI in Network fundamental, I was looking at, like I said yesterday, we are looking at um, um, we explain the rule and function of network components to we'll describe their characteristics, um, its characteristics of the um, network topologies, we will compare physical interfaces and cablings. We are also going to identify interfaces and cable issues. I just spoke about what this is. So we're going to do the first item, which is to identify the rule and function of each network component. Okay, when we talk about rule and function of network components, first thing we need to ask ourselves is that what are the what are what is a computer network? I know most of you already understand uh, computer network. You already have your own form of definition for computer network. So. I took this from uh, Wikipedia, this um, diagram I'm looking at, and you can see that it's a collection of all the devices that are shared in um, data through the OSI reference um, layer that I explained or talked about yesterday. So, um, having said that, what indeed or actually is a computer network? If your computer network is a set of computer resources you put it on. Or provided by network nodes. And uh, we also know that the computer uses a uh, common communication protocols over each type of connections to communicate with each other. This Wikipedia definition of what the network is all about. And then we're going to go into each and every one of them gradually. Then, lastly, these interconnections are made up of telecommunication network technologies based on physical wire, optical, and wireless duplicates that may, that may be arranged in a variety of network technologies. Now, I told us that the OSI reference model is what we actually use in designing our networks. And we use different topologies in doing that, but we need to understand what a network is. So before we understand what a network is, let us understand what the node is actually. I told us that the node can be a router in the network. Uh, very soon, I'm going to explain all that the router does. I just want to quickly explain all this part. I'll be able to wrap it up. A node can also be a switch in the network. A node can be a firewall. A node can also be a server or a client. All these are nodes in the network. But the what brought up the server and the client aspect is because both of them can be regarded as end hosts or endpoints because of the kind of application you can use both of them for which is a server client application now in order to understand that let us try and build a network to build a network i use this icon or symbol for pc1 it can actually be any Icon, but just try and understand that this icon, you can see from now on, so it is a PC one. Then, now, if two systems are connected and they are not, so if two systems are set up and they are not connected together, that system, because it's not communicating with another system or a network, is referred to as a standalone system, meaning that it's not in any network. 
But when we connect them together, which is the simplest form of network, we refer to it as a pen to pair network. Now, that simple table now that we have connecting both systems together can be replaced with other things. So, in building your network, is how to replace this cable with other networking devices so that these two systems can communicate. Now, before we go further, let us first of all understand that the computer network is a digital communication telecommunication network which allows nodes to, nodes to share resources. Please make note of, it. Make note of that. It allows nodes to share resources. So it's the sharing of resources now that we're going to be dwelling upon. Now, the first node we will look at is the network line. Now, like I said before now, I said this symbol can be used as to replace anything. The client is an end device. So I just use this symbol. It can be a laptop. Your client can be a laptop. It can also be a server. A server in a network, a client in a network. So it can be a laptop, it can be a server, it can be a MacBook. You understand? An iMac. It can also be your phone. So please take note of that. The client, the network client can be a laptop, a server, and yeah, an iMac, or your phone. All these are standard clients in your network. So in discussing what the client really means, we have to look at the definition of what the client is. It says that the client is a device that accesses services made available by, by a server. Somebody raising his hands. Um, somebody raising his hands. Okay. Okay. By a server. So I need us to understand this definition very well. That the client is a device that accesses and services made available by the server. That simple definition can, can make or mark your view because if you do not understand this definition, it's difficult for you to continue from here. You just know that anything that accesses services made available in the network is actually a client. Now, having said that, let's now look at the network here, server. I use this icon also to represent the network the server. A uh, network server can be an IBM or a Dell. Both of them these are examples of two servers that you have out there. But we need to understand what the network server is. I tell you, the network server is a device that provides functions or services for a client in a network. We need to understand these definitions appropriately. That can be able to understand how to do your network. So, having said that, let's come back to our pay to pay network. In understanding this network, we need to explain the server client. Um, we have two PCs connected together, and then this PC is asking PC1 is asking PC2. For an image, and PC2 responds or gives it an image, gives it the image as a response from the request. In this case, now, PC1 is acting as a client because it's making requests on the network, while PC2 is acting as the server. So I need us to understand that really, that client makes it quick for network resources. Why server responds to the response? So the uh, resource. So now that we now have this basic definition of who a client is and who a server really is, let's now go to you trying to assess this video on YouTube. And then uh, now the connection now has been replaced by the internet. That single line that we had before now has been replaced by the internet. In this case now, your phone is asking for the video, which is this video, and the YouTube server sends the video to your phone and has the, the, the video. In this particular case, your phone is acting as a client, while the YouTube server is acting as a 
English server. We need to understand these two terminologies very well because that's the whole essence of the networking. Now, the third example is maybe two phones, or even maybe Zender or any other application to ask for a video and request and request that video. The phone that requests for the video is referred to as a client, while the one that gives the video is referred to as a server. I really need to understand this concept very well. Now, to summarize what I was saying is that the client is a device that possesses a service made available by the server, while the server is a device that provides function or services for the client. Now that you have gotten these two definitions, let's this I think this will be ended in our last slide. So today now we are going to look at a more robust network. Remember last time I showed you PC1 and PC2, I will draw a line between both of them. I will say that that was a pay-to-pay connection. So in this case, now welcome if I uh, you are welcome. Um, in this case now, we want to look at an office in Calabar and an office in Lagos. Um, the two offices, the one in Lagos is the headquarters that has two servers, server one and server two. Why the office in Calabar has PC1 is two, it's just a branch office. Now, you cannot possibly connect a cable from here as in from Calabar to Lagos. So how do you possibly design or draw this uh, uh, network? The first thing you need to understand is that when the number of network devices that you have here, which, is, which are your PCs, the network printers, the network scanner, your photocopier, device that you or any device that is on the network, you want to, if you want them to be connected together, as long as they are they are not far from each other, it's just an office or within a building or within an office complex. The first thing that you need to do is to draw all of them together into a device or aggregate all of them together into a device. That device that you're using aggregating all your pieces together is a to as a network switch. An example is what's on the screen. Now, hello, Daniel, you need to mute your, mute your speaker, so you will not, um, whatever noise you are in the lobby, enjoy the video. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Now, as I was saying, now when you have all the systems connected to the switch, it is now, it's all of them, especially in the Calabar office, cannot be able to communicate with each other. The moment you do this, we refer to this kind of network as the local area network, meaning that you are able to connect every device in the, in the office to one switch. The same thing will happen in, uh, in Lagos. Switch one is connected to the is in Calabar office, all the devices are connected to switch one. Why switch two? All the servers are connected to switch two. Now, this is the first step. We have two lines now, which is one in the Calabar office and the other one in Lagos office. LAN one and LAN two. And the switch is what makes the LAN where everybody is connected to. Now, the, what the switch can do for us is to ensure that this is one can be able to talk to PC2. They can be able to share resources. The same with um, uh, server one to server two. You understand? But the moment they want to go to the internet, switch does not forward such packets. They pause the device is needed. An example of a switch is what you have out there. You can see the number of connections that is on the switch. It has multiple interfaces, multiple ports. So as many as you want to connect, I think from 24 and above, I think it ends in 48 ports. Okay. Now you can connect to this end, which all the devices will be you have a cable running for all the way from that device to this particular switch. Now the switch, like I said, cannot be able to make your systems browse. You need the third device. Take for example you want to connect to the internet 
the switch will not uh, forward that uh, information because the switch will not know how to get to the internet. So what you need uh, is a router. But before we look at the router, let's look at the types of switches that we have out there. The first is um, Cisco Cat Catalyst 9200. That's a switch that has about 48 ports. Very expensive. We also have another type of switch. I have this one in the office, Cisco um, Catalyst. It's 650. This one is a 24 port switch. It's on the floor in my office. And then if you want to receive the study, we will all play with it very soon. But these are the type of switch types of switches you easily come across. There are other types of switches, but these are the two major switches that you use for either you are if you want to write your Cisco exams, uh, these are the switches that you use. Or you have your packet tracer, maybe we'll start doing some configuration very soon. The switch that you see here is this and this. Now let's look at the characteristics of the switch. A switch has many network interfaces and I showed it for now. Or ports for the end rules to connect. Usually, you see 24 port switch, but it's, we also have the 48 port switch, the switch you have here. The second thing about the switch is that it provides connectivity to host within the same LAN. I explained that one to us just now that you see one of these two can communicate, but they cannot go to the internet. So, connectivity is already achieved in that local area network. And the important thing is that we do not provide connectivity between lands over the internet. Exactly what I explained to us the other time. They do not connect connectivity between lands. They only just work within the land that they are providing for that end user. Now, what the device that we need to connect to the internet are the routers. So let's go back to our, our diagram the level. So for us to go to the uh, internet. We need this router one and router two. Now, the switch is connected to the router, and the router has what we call the routing cable that is able to tell, to tell wherever these people are going to, anybody that's going to the switch, wherever they're going to, it sends the information to that place. So for now, in this particular network, we have two offices. So in those two offices, we need a router in each of those offices. So we need to configure this router and this switch in order for everybody in this place to be able to communicate with everybody in this other end. So that's the essence of the router. And I also like to tell you the types of routers we have. We have an ISRO 1000, ISRO 900, and this other one that we have out there. Now, you can see if you look at it very well, unlike the switch that, we, that I showed you earlier, you will find that the router does not have a lot of interfaces. It only has, um, it's only ISRO 900 that has its interface. And you can see that the interfaces are limited. You can see in this case, now you have, this one is a, your cursor. If you want to connect the laptop to the router that I can configure it. But this other one is an interface that uses. These two interfaces are bigger interfaces. Why these four? They are fast Ethernet interfaces. I will explain all those interfaces for us very soon. But I just want us to understand what the router is all about. So as you have seen, these are different types of routers you are playing with out here. So now let's look at the characteristics of the router. I said that the router have fewer network interfaces as I explained to you just now. It has fewer network interfaces than the switch. It does not need multiple connections. So the switch is one that requires multiple connections. So that is what everybody will connect to. But for everybody to get internet, you need a router. So the next thing that we need to know about the router is that the routers are used to provide connectivity between LANs. It's very, very important. That's the essence of the router, to provide connectivity between LANs. And therefore, they are therefore used to send data over the internet. That's just saying the same thing again. So if you if you have internet connection in the office, you don't need to start connecting to all the systems. All you just need to, you need to do is to connect it to the router. And maybe it's going to be the router, you connect your switch to the, route, the same router. And everybody that's going to that switch automatically gets the internet that is on that same router. So I'm just explaining everything for us so that we need to know all the network nodes and how they operate in the network. 
The next thing that we need to look at is the firewall. Now, the network, I brought back the network into the diagram again, Calabar office and the Lagos office. Now, things are going smoothly. If someone wants to send information to server one, all it needs to do is to send the information on the information and the packet list, list PC one, gets to switch one. Switch one looks at the destination um, address and it sees that it is not within this local area network. So it sends anything that is not within this local area network to the gateway. Now, the interface of this router is referred to as the network gateway. So most times when you have people configuring the system and say, what is your gateway? Just know that is the IP address of this router that is connected to the switch. So it sends the packet to this uh, gateway. And when the packet gets to the router, the router looks at the routing table and says, okay, I know the route to Lagos office. It's through the internet. He sends the packet through this interface straight to this other router. As long as this router is going to the internet, they find their way back down to the router and it gets to the server. But what if in a case whereby you have a rogue, an attacker on the network? The, the um, security features of a router are limited. What a router is built for is to connect LANs together or connect you to the internet or the global and uh, the worldwide web. That's what the router is meant for. It's not meant for core security features. So it's only it only take time for the hacker to do what they call port scanning or denial of service or whatever tool that he has to be able to break into this router. And most times, most hackers, what they do is that maybe they see a network like this, they try and hack into the branch office and create a node inside the branch office so that your servers will, will feel when they see a packet coming, they will feel that it is a member of this network, not knowing that it's what this man has sent. So the firewall is what is being used to protect the network. Firewall can be connected outside the network, which is in this case in the Labar office, the firewall is connected outside the network in front of the router. Or it can be connected inside the network that's behind the router. So the firewall is one that protects the office from an um, attack from um, hackers or rules. Now, having gotten that understanding, there are two types of firewalls uh, that we have there. We have the ASA 5500X and the Firepower 2100. Um, Firepower 2100. Now, both of them are regarded as next generation generation firewall. And I will explain all this later for us while we proceed. But let us look at the characteristics of the firewall. Now, the firewall monitors and controls network traffic based on configured, configured rules. When we started this lecture, I told us before now that when anything happens in an organization, that has to do with hacking or um, penetration or intrusion, and they want to start um, investigating the matter. The first person that will be picked is the network engineer. Now, that should not scale us, but that should let us know that we need to put the right devices in place so that our company secrets will not be stolen because they employed us. So you need to know what to do. So now these are the devices that can help you to protect your organization, or you can actually, if you are not working the organization, maybe like what I said earlier on, you are you are more or less like a contract staff. You can explain to them that before you go ahead to work on your network, you need to get these devices set up. And the beauty about this thing is that you can actually configure each and every of these devices remotely. Like in my own case, I configured the device while I was in Calabaya. Guess what? The router that I worked on was in Lagos. And I was paid 190,000 uh, for just 45 minutes by set up security features on that um, on that um, router. It's the same thing that I want all of you to be able to do. So that when you publish your your profile in in, uh, in accounts like Fiverr or LinkedIn, you will be able to get jobs that will connect you 
and that will make that will pay you in dollars. So, having said that, I said uh, the fire, firewalls monitor and control network traffic based on configured rules. Now, the configured rules are the policies of the company. Whatever they told you to do is a policy, or, or rather, the the working working uh, condition of the company is actually referred to as a company policy. So you as a network engineer, you should know the working condition so I'll be able to configure their devices properly for them. So that's what you mean by based on configured rules. Now, the second thing we need to take note of is that firewall can be placed inside, like I said earlier, or inside the network or outside the network. The choice is yours. And lastly, firewalls are known as next generation firewalls. When they include more modern, more, when they include more modern and advanced filtering capabilities. Having said that, let us understand something that firewalls are hardware devices that filter traffic between the folks. But guess what? Your laptop also has a firewall. And that is referred to as host based firewalls. So they are, those ones are referred to as software applications that filter traffic entry and existing host machine like a PC. Having said that about firewalls, I would, um, it's time, to, uh, at, at least I have been able to address all the network devices, starting from the router to the switch to the um, firewalls, all the network nodes, I will introduce them. Us. So I would like us to answer some questions, just five questions, before we take attendance. Before we take attendance and end this end, and end this end, this end meeting. I already have ten minutes left, so let's be fast with it. The first question is this: I would like you, I would like everybody to give their own answer. Don't worry, any of you, I will explain the answer, give us the answer, but just try. So I'll, let me see how. You are, you are okay. So you can unmute yourself to answer if you know the answer. So the question is, your company wants to purchase some network hardware so, so that you connect about 30 pieces in your department. So which type of network device is appropriate? A, you have a router. B, you have a firewall. C, you have a switch. And D, a server. Who can give me the answer, please? You can unmute yourself and tell me the best device to use to connect this pieces in the department. So, you can use this. You said? Yes, which? So, that you can introduce the network to okay. other part of CP. So, I don't get what you said. You can come again. I say the switch. switch. You are very correct. Now the switch is the device. You can you can mute yourself. Let me explain why the switch is the answer. Then you can move this. You are very correct. Now why is it say the switch is the answer? Let's look at why the router, the firewall, and the server are not the answer. The first thing is that the router, the router is like like this Cisco ISRO series router is designed for forwarding traffic between networks, not for connecting lots of hosts like pieces. It does not have the interfaces to do that. A router will not typically have 13 network interfaces to connect to. So that's why the router <clears throat> is not the answer. The second one is the firewall. The firewall, like the like the one I showed you earlier on, the 65 on 100 X series. It's designed to filter traffic as it enters and exits the local area network. It is not designed to connect directly to a host. And typically, will not have enough network interfaces for 30 hosts. So, and the last one is the server. The server is an end host itself, not a networking device to which you will connect other end hosts to. So, that's one thing you should take note of. So, the right answer is a switch. Because a switch like Cisco Catalyst 200 series switch is designed to connect many end hosts in the same LAN together. They include many network interfaces to hold. So let's look at another question. I like that, Daniel. I mean, let's look at another question and see if we are following it. Now, 
you receive a video from a friend, a friend's Apple iPhone using a job. Now, what you know is I want to know if the iPhone functionality functioning as in that okay. What is the iPhone functioning as in that transaction? Is it functioning A? Is it functioning as a server? Or is functioning as a client? Or is functioning as a local area network? Can somebody give me the answer to that, please? Is functioning as a client? As a client. You are also very correct. Yes. It's, not, it's not a client, it's a server. Now, you see a video file from your friend. Let's see why it's a server. Oh. Hold on. Okay. Please. Now, in this case, your phone, not your friend's iPhone, is functioning as a client. It's not for, it's functioning. Hold on, what am I saying? Okay, as a client. A client accesses a service, it does not provide a service. So it is wrong if you say as a client. Now, if you say as a local area network, an end host like an iPhone does not function as a local area network by itself. It can, however, be part of a local area network. So the right answer is a server. A server is a device that provides function or services for clients. In this case, your friend's phone provided the file to your iPhone. So and that, according to the question, your friend's phone ends up with the server. You try learning. Now let's look at the third question. What is your computer or smartphone functioning as while you watch this video? What is your computer or your smartphone functioning as while you watch this video? A is functioning as a server. B an end host. C as a client. Who can tell me the answer? An end host. And functions as an end host. Actually, it's functioning as a client. You are right. But I told the owner that an end host is a combination of server and client. But let us look at the explanation. It's actually functioning as a client because we are requesting for the video from YouTube or um, Zoom Zoom channel. So let me look at the answers to it. If it's a server, your device is using a service not providing one. So it's not functioning as a server. Secondly, although your device is an end host, like I said earlier, that does not describe its function. Both server and client are end hosts in network. So you have to be direct. That's one thing about these questions. You have to be direct. And the answer is your device is receiving service from YouTube server. Therefore, it is functioning as a client. Now let's look at the fourth question before the last. Your company wants to purchase some network hardware to connect its separate networks together, like what you did previously. What kind of network device is appropriate? One, a file system. Two, a host. Three, a lab. A host. A host. <laughs> oh, sorry. The last one is a router. So you can answer the question again. Are you sure it is? So your company wants to purchase some network hardware to connect the separate um, networks together. So what kind of network device is appropriate? Is it a host like it and uh, call it safe? Think about it. The device to connect other networks together. Because of time, let us just let me just wrap up. It's actually a router. Now let's look at the question, the answers. A firewall, although a firewall can connect multiple networks together, its primary purpose is to monitor and control traffic as it enters and exits the network. So that's what you what you need to connect your multiple offices together. The second is a host. The term host can refer to any type of network node. Like I said before now, it can be a laptop, it can be a server, it can be an iMac, it can also be your iPhone. So that's not what you mean, actually. Mm -hmm. A LAN stands for local area network. A LAN is not a network device itself. It's just a term for a group of computers connected together. Now, a router is a device that is designed to connect and forward network traffic between multiple networks. Now, the last question. Your company wants to upgrade its own network firewall that has been there for several years to one that provides more advanced function functions. What kind of firewall should be 
purchase. Should they purchase a post-based firewall or a next level firewall or a next generation firewall or a top layer firewall? Quickly answer because my time is almost up. Okay, don't worry, you will understand when you watch the video again, you know that I okay. Okay, you're about saying something. I don't know. I'll go for I'll go for host based firewall. Okay. No, I'm not I'm not the time this class started. I'm not yet the time the class started. Okay, okay. Um when this, we are doing lectures like this, try and um, jot your take and um, jottings of what I am saying. Uh, because the idea is for you to fill your log books and all these things are what you need to fill your log books. So, but the answer is a next generation firewall. And then let's go through the answers, it's options one after the other. A low space firewall is a piece of software that runs on an end device, like a firewall on your computer. It is not a network firewall. The second one is that a next level firewall and a top layer firewall, they don't exist. They are not actual types of firewall. The answer, is a next generation firewall which combines traditional firewall features with more advanced filtering functionalities. So this will end our lectures for today and I will advise all of us to, to send me your mail.